So today, here's what I want to do. I want to, I want to preach part two on the subject, spiritual surrender. And I don't know if we get this or not, but God has really been working in my heart. Part two, spiritual surrender. And how many of you know that spiritual surrender requires something? Watch this. All you, all you theologians and all you Christians out there who think you're just going to get saved and get on a little boat and sing kumbaya and everything's going to go good, watch this. That's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Listen to me. It's not, and I want, I want y'all to lean in and listen to this. It's not that we've got more of God. When you get saved and you get born again, you get all of God. You get God, you get Jesus, you get the Holy Spirit. But here's what we forget. God don't get all of us. I am stronger today than I was yesterday. So it's not that I've got more of God. It's that God has more of me. And listen, that, that'll preach all by itself. But I, I want to give that to you. I, I know you believe in Jesus. I, I, I know that you believe in the Holy Word of God. I, I know you're here today. And I know some people's listening by Facebook and website and all that. So watch this. There's something about when you say, God, I surrender. I surrender. Jesus, I surrender. God, I give up on my ideas. I give up. Watch this. I know some of you know you really think that you think how church ought to be ran. But watch this. We are learning. We're growing. We're going to make mistakes. All of us are. Turn to your neighbor and say, I know you made a mistake. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> I had to do that. I don't know where it come from. I had to do it. Uh, but listen, here, that's another thing when you say these words, Lord, I surrender. I want everybody to say that, Lord. Now I want y'all to mean, I surrender. I give up. And so listen, here it is. Y'all got your white, you got your handkerchief and they're still up here. If you want a handkerchief, grab you one. They're free. It, it means surrender. So here's what I want to do. If y'all ready for, to listen, I'm ready to give you a word. Amen. How many of y'all come to church to get something today? Amen. Yeah, yeah. Get something. So here it is, Luke chapter 22. Man, I love y'all so much. I just love Elkhorn. Here's the deal. Here, I, I've been to other churches, and I'm not saying, listen, that's good. But boy, there's something special in this house. Boy, I know we got troubles, and I know that, and watch this, we always will. If you arrive, you know what that means? You died. And so today, Luke chapter 22 I've never preached out, out of this. I, I've, I've made quotes out of this verse in this chapter, but I've never really preached intentional out of this. Luke chapter 22, verse 39 through 42. I'm reading out of the ESV today, English Standard Version. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Luke 22, verse 39 through 42, and he came out and went. And he came out and went. And the Holy Ghost just came into my heart right now and just said these words. You need to tell the people, I'm wanting to work through them. I'm wanting to come out. I'm wanting to come through you. I'm wanting to work in your life. But some of you, some of you, you're, you're a Christian hoarder. Some of you, that's all right, let me go this side. Some of you are a Christian hoarder. Listen, God didn't give you a past for you to hold it in and never to relieve it and release it and help somebody else. Your testimony was not for your, your story. I know you went through some gory. I know you got a testimony, but God says, I'm wanting to come out. I'm wanting to come through you. Not even in my notes, so y'all get that for free today. As it was a custom, he went to the Mount of Olives and his disciples followed him. Notice his disciples followed him. And when he came to the place, he said to them, I love this, pray that you may not enter into temptation. Pray, pray, pray that you may not enter into temptation. Now, how many of you know if God told his disciples to stop and pray that you may not enter into temptation, it's very wise that we do that here today. Because everybody, watch this, I don't care who you are, you are being tempted some way, some shape, some fashion. So watch this. And he withdrew from them about a stone's throw. He knelt down and he prayed saying, verse 42, I love this and here's where I'm going. Father, if you are willing, hallelujah, remove this cup from me. And I love this, I love this, I love this. But nevertheless, 
But nevertheless, nevertheless, watch, here it is. Not my will, but yours be done. Somebody give God praise on that one. Come on, y'all. That's so good. Not my will. Not my will, but your will be done. The church, family, friend, listen to me. If you want the true definition, I know I went to Vine's Expository Dictionary, and I went, I went to Barner Research, and I went all these places, but here's what God said. Go to the Bible. Go to the Bible. He says, if you really want to know what surrender is, is listen, when you can say these words, this equals surrender. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Father, not my will. Ooh, I'm gonna preach this. Not my will. Whew, I feel the Holy Ghost. But your will be done on my in my life, through my life, here on earth as it is in heaven. That right there, somebody say amen to that one. I know, listen, it's so easy to say. It is so easy to say, Father God, not my will, until it's time to do something big for God. Then you're sitting there going, I don't know. Or God puts an obstacle in front of your life and you know in your spirit what to do, but your flesh is rising up saying, don't do it. Don't do it. But watch this. I'm telling you, listen, what some of us, all of us, everybody say all of us. Everybody, starting with me. We need a nevertheless moment. Mm. God, I know what I want. Yeah. I know what my flesh is wanting to do. I feel like I know what's best for me. But nevertheless, hallelujah, but nevertheless, not my will, God, but your will be done in my life, through my life, that somebody else can be blessed. It's not easy. Watch this. I'm going to go ahead and tell you, it is not easy to surrender. You know how I know? Look at the world. You think God actually wants racism on earth? You know what's the problem? Listen, it is not black and white issue. It's called sin. S-I-N. And you know the, little, the middle initial is I. I'm preaching. Whoo, I feel the Holy Ghost. I don't know what's going to happen here today. And if you're a guest, we do not apologize here today. I, Lord, I want this. Lord, if you can do this, I will do that. That was the same problem in Ezekiel. When Satan, Lucifer, was in heaven, he tried to have control. He said, I'm going to show you this, and I'm going to do this. He said, I, 15 times in his equal. And if you don't get you out of the way, God will never be glorified. Now, when was the last time? I wrote this in my, I wrote this, this is a sermon for me. So I'm preaching to me first. Brian Rafferty, when was the last time? Now, I want you to be honest. I wrote this in my no big, be honest, Brian. You said, Lord, I want your will. Not my will, but your will for my life. Whatever you want for me, I'll do it. Wherever you want me to go, God, I'll do it. That is so easy. That is so easy to say. It's so easy to say until he says, okay, Jonah. I want you to go to Nineveh. Uh, I didn't mean it. Oh, okay, okay. I want you to witness to your coworker who just cussed you out. I need you to teach Sunday school. I need you to drive a van. Uh, I'm going somewhere. Uh huh. Oh, what about this one? I need you to forgive the person who just hurt you. Ah. <laughs> Yeah, what about this? I need you to repent. I need you to confess. I need you to turn it around. Oh, what about this one? Thank you, Holy Ghost. I need you to allow the world to nail you to the cross. But see, here's the deal. God said these words, they're going to nail you. It's not going to work out the way that you think it's going to work out. But I've not forgotten about you. Even in the grave, in the darkest moment of your life, when everybody else wrote a rock in front of your tomb, when everybody else walked out on you, God will walk in. He'll say, you let them nail you to the cross. But in three days later, Brother Gary, he said, I'll get you back up. Come on, we need a God. We need to allow him to get us back up. Somebody give God praise in here today. That's surrender. That's surrender. Yeah, when was the last time you, honest to God, honest to God, don't lie, because it's thick in here today. When was the last time you prayed not my will. 
but your will. So how do we find, I used to go to church, and I've been in church all my life. I went to church in my mother's womb. And the preacher would preach, but he had never given me an outlet. He would say, you need to do this, and you got sin in your life. I'm like, I know. Help me get out of this ditch. Help me serve God better. And so how do we find the will of God in our lives? Y'all ready? Now, this is not going to be a deep theological, eschatological big word. I don't even know what those words mean. They just come out. But here, listen to me. How do you find the will of God in your life? Psalms chapter 37, verse 23. If you're with me, say amen. Because here, here's the key. Because everybody wants a big moment. Everybody says, man, Brian, hey, I, I can do this, that, and the other. And you're in the valley of the shadow of death right now. Some of you are under my teaching today, and you are completely out of the will of God. How do you get back in? Psalms 37, verse 23 says, listen to me, it's so good. The steps of a righteous man, a woman, are ordered, 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 ordered by the Lord. See, Here's the deal. Here's the difference between me and a lot of people. I believe in the sovereignty of God. Now, y'all better be careful. Well, Brian, what about 9-11? God did not cause it, but God allowed it. Coronavirus. God did not cause it. Humanity caused it. And because we had the eye moment in sin, we are where we're at today. But I got a God that will turn it around in Jesus' name. But we got to come together, touching and agreeing that God can do this, church. Oh, somebody give God praise. I'm telling you, there's something good in here today. So how do I, how did I, how did I? And, and God's still working on me. Because watch this. Sometimes I'm in the will of God. Sometimes I'm out of the will of God. Can I just be honest with y'all? I know y'all are good. Some of y'all need to get up here and preach. How do, how, how do I find the will of God? Here's how you find the will of God for your life. Listen, <laughs> I, I'm, God gave this to me. I'm like, God, that's so simple. He said, I know, do it. We want three points and a benediction. We want a hoorah. We want an emotional sermon to make us cry and to break us down. And God says, listen, I wrote the manual you got to follow it. If you want, hallelujah, if you want the Bible blessings, you got to do it the Bible way. Here's what he said. Here's what he said. And here's what he told me. As you keep stepping toward God, everybody say toward God. Now listen, you can't act like a heathen and expect a blessing. You cannot be full of sin and full of hatred and full of all this nasty worldly stuff. Watch this. That ain't you anyhow. That's what God just told me. You tell them that is not them. When the Holy Ghost lives in you, the fruit of the Spirit will live in you. That's who you are. I am so tired of this world beating down Christians. We are the church of today, not yesterday. I love my granny. I love what she taught me, but granny's in glory. I love my mama. My mama's still living. But God says, Brian, today is your day. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. So here's what God told me. Here's what God told me. Very rarely does God give you his whole plan all at once. Very, very. Listen, I've been doing this for 24 years. Very rarely. Matter of fact, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't think God ever has given me, now he may have you, his whole plan all at one time. But Willie, here's what God spoke to me. He said, you tell the people, every step that they take has purpose. Huh. Even... When it feels like the track is, the train has come off the track. Even when, you, when your house is not what it needs to be. I'm telling you, how do you find the will of God? You take off running after him as hard as you can. As hard as you can. Don't you stop. Don't you look to the left or to the right. And you just keep stepping. Uh, Brian, I'm getting knocked down. Get back up. If they knock you down seven, get up eight. I'm just telling y'all. How do you find the will of God? You got to realize every step that you take going toward him has purpose. Y'all got me? Every, everybody say this, every step, oh, the rest of you, come on, everybody, this is a good participation, okay? Every step that I take has purpose. If y'all get that, because some of you, well, that's God doing this to me. 
how about this? God, I don't understand what you're doing to me. I don't know why you've allowed it, but God, I'm going to keep stepping. I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep trucking. I'm going to keep praying in the Holy Ghost. I'm going to keep praising you no matter if my neighbor does or not. God, I'm going to step, step, and one day I'm going to step up into heaven. And when I get up into heaven, all my answers, all the glory, everything that I went through had purpose here on earth. How many of y'all can look back over your life and you may not know why, know why at that time you was going through some hell in the hallway. Somebody, you look at your life and you said, they're going, man, Brian, I want to quit. I want to give up. If you will be honest, everybody in here has wanted to quit. How come you're here? You keep stepping. Well, marriage ain't always beautiful. Now, it's got great rewards. Yeah. Are y'all okay? I'm going to do a marriage one-on-one class. But listen, marriage is tough. Y'all know what this is? I'm up here teaching and preaching and learning. I'm getting knocked down. I don't want to quit stepping. We're learning together. We need people around us that when you fall, I felt the Holy Ghost, when you fall back, you land on them. You land on them. We need people like that in our life. And here's a... Here's another nugget that I've learned after 24 years of ministry. Matter of fact, tomorrow, tomorrow, July 20th, is my 12th year, mine and Dana and my family's 12th year being your pastor. 12 years. Isn't that crazy? I never, it seems like yesterday. And I know some of you are going, I ain't talking to you. I'm talking to the ones who love me. Amen? 12 years, 12 years, 12 years, 12 years being your pastor. God, we've seen some good stuff, haven't we? But y'all look at me, lean in. I'm telling y'all, if we surrender, the best is yet to be. Did y'all hear me? If we all surrender, the best is yet to be. Here's another nugget I've learned over 24 years of ministry. What, what if I told you the answer to your prayers is, is based upon your surrender? Thank you, Holy Ghost. The, the answer, how many of y'all are praying right now? Please, if you're, come on, help me. Raise your hand if you're praying. Come on, raise your hand. Please tell me there's more people in here praying than 15 or 20. If you're praying, the answer to your prayer is based upon your surrender. I'm telling you, it's based upon your surrender. When you and I get to a point when we quit fussing, we quit bickering, we quit gossiping, and we say, God, I don't understand what you're doing, but God, it's not my will, but it's your will. I'm preaching better than y'all acting. I worked hard on this. Some of your prayers, listen to me, are being hindered. Some of your prayers are being quenched. Some of your prayers, my prayers, are being blocked and stopped all because of one word, surrender. The answer, listen to me, what if I told you the answer to your prayer is not the other person changing? Can I teach a minute? Can I teach a minute? Every time me and Dana has gotten into it, I'm going over, let me go back. Okay. Every time, every time, 100% of the time, and I don't want to say this because I want it to be her fault. Y'all look at me, if you're married, raise your hand. How many, how many of y'all fussed before? God, it, you made her. <laughs> y'all put your hands down. Hurry up, hurry up, put them down. But man, when I go to God, I'm like, Bruh! see, I talk to God like I talk to y'all. I don't say, thou Father God who art in heaven, oh God, how thou beest. I don't do it. I'm from Kentucky. He knows Kentucky language, Mike. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, God, what's wrong with her? She done had a moment. And I ain't going as far as I'm going. Because God said, I'll give you grace for that moment. The rest of it's on you. Here's what God does every single time. Brian, if you would change your attitude, if you would change your perspective, if you would love her the way I love her. Y'all see, see what I'm saying? God always starts with me. If you're in a situation, if you're in a valley, if you're in the ditch line, if there's something going on in your life, this sermon, I'm telling you, God spoke to me so mildly and so powerful. Everything starts with you. 
It is so easy to blame the government and the, and the, and the Democrats and the uh, Republicans and the independents. It's us. Why, why hasn't America changed? You want me to tell you why? Hope you don't hear some heat. It's the church. We, we, you're here today, but are you really? Come on now. Listen, your pastor's changing. Thank God. Thank God. And thank y'all for allowing me to make mistakes. Because I've made a bunch. And watch this, it won't be my last one. But watch this. We're all right. Here's what I've learned. Listen to me. Quit looking outside your house and clean your house. Clean your house. Sweep your floors. Clean out your closet. And let God deal with the other stuff. Mm, mm, mm. See, hello, yeah. Well, I, I wrote this in my notes. I'm almost done, believe it or not. See, y'all think she said, dad, dad, do goo goo, whatever. She, she, I'm telling, see, listen, if y'all ain't gonna say amen, baby's gonna say amen. We can learn from children, amen. Listen, I'm just telling you, God is good in this house. I know, I know in 2010, we've seen 91 salvations. But I'm here to put a burr under your saddle today. I'm here to be the head coach today. It is not time to take a back seat and give up and get the train come off the track. It is time to get in the caboose. It is time to drive it. Go forward. Well, Brian, you don't know what they did for me. You've not forgiven them. If you, hallelujah. Let me teach you. Listen, God's just speaking. Let, let him go. Let, let, him, let him do it. If you always bring up past it's because you've not forgiven the past. How many of y'all know people, man? Every time you talk to them, Ryan, you just don't, you just don't know. 20 years ago, I tell you what, they just know you don't know what they've done to me. I feel the Holy Ghost. Let me, let me talk, let me talk, let me talk, let me talk, let me talk. You're just as bad as they are. Because the Bible says in Mark 11, if you don't forgive them, God won't even hear your prayers. So, Jimmy, could it be the reason why our prayers are hitting the ceiling and coming back down is because you've got unforgiveness in your heart? And he, let me go on. Here, here's, I wrote this down. I would rather, and this was hard for me to write, because I take this stuff serious. And because I know when I speak this, there's going to be a shift. Not just in my life, but if you say amen, in your life. It's so easy to say, God, use me. But watch this. I wrote this down. I would rather be in the center of God's will in Iraq than out of his will in Kentucky. I'm going to let that soak. Lord, use me. I'm all yours. I'm a vessel. I want my cup to be clean on the inside. Oh, God, oh, Jesus, I'll do whatever you call me to do. But just don't go take me to Nineveh. But there was a fish called Grace. Even while he was in the belly of the fish. Sometimes you've got to have a dark moment to appreciate the light. Sometimes you've got to go through the valley of the shadow of death to make you realize what you've got sitting beside you, what kind of church you've got. I'm almost done. So here's what God said. Here's what God said. Because here's what I know to be true, and this is a fact. This is a fact. When you get in, in the center, and watch this, there, there, there's a permissive will and there's a permanent will. Those are two different wills. There's some things God will allow you to do, but it may not be necessarily his whole complete will. And this is a whole different teaching. Come on Wednesday night and I'll go deeper with you. But listen to me very carefully. Here's what I know. When you get in the center, the center of God's will, the center, uh, you say, Brian, is that possible? It is possible. If, if it was not possible, God would not have wrote about it in his Bible. It is possible to have the mind of Christ. It is possible to be full of the Holy Ghost. It is possible. 
It is possible that blind eyes can come open. It is possible that God can raise dead things. It is possible that lame legs can walk. It is possible for your child who may be on drugs, who's strung out and living like a heathen and sleeping with the pigs. It is possible for God to speak to him while he's in the pig pen and say, come to your senses and come back home. But here's what I noticed. When you come to your senses and you surrender, God, it is not my will. I thought I wanted the inheritance. I thought I wanted this. And when you come to your senses, the first thing you'll do is head home. God said these words. When you get in the center of God's will, everybody say the center of God's will. Come on, everybody everybody else say the center of God's will. You will find his promises, his provision, and his power. I'm telling you, you will find his promises, his provision, and his power. Promises, provision, and power. Promises, provision, and power. So I'll leave you with this. Praise team, you guys come. I'll leave you guys with this. You say, Brian, you, it's short, and I'm going to preach what God lays in my heart. I'll leave you guys with three things that you can do that will help you surrender to the will of God, to God's will. How many of y'all truly, listen to me, now, you can raise your hand all you want to. How many of you truly want God's will for your life? I'm at the right place then. So, <laughs> what I'm getting ready to give y'all, it's hard. It's tough. Watch this, you ready? It's a process. It's a process. It's a process. If anybody ever comes up to you and says, I've arrived, run. Run. Get out of there. But there's three things that God put on my heart to give you that we can do to help us surrender to God's will. Number one, here it is. It's a big one. And man, listen, this number one, I struggle. God, I struggle. Um, But here it is. Trust that God is who he says he is. Now, Brian, why do you struggle with that? I'll tell you why. I'm glad y'all asked. Because I'll pray for something and I'll pick it back up. I'll pray, God, I know you're God. I know you're sovereign. And God, I trust you. (laughs) Why are you crying? Well, Brian, it breaks my heart because what if God don't do it? Now you're telling truth. I think a lot of people are here today. You love God. You believe in God. But do you trust God? Well, you're here today, you, you love him, you're faithful, but let me ask something, do you trust him? So I went on two weeks vacation, and man, God just uh, uprooted some things in my heart that was not right. Now, I know y'all are perfect, you're good, you're sanctified, glorified, and all the fides, but here's what I'm telling you. You've always got to do a heart check. And here's what God, here's what God told me, Willie. And I, I'm, I'm not embarrassed to say this, but I'm ashamed to say this. He said, Brian, you don't trust me. Wow. Boy, I'm telling you, it's quiet in here today. Yeah. Some of you are praying and praying and praying and praying. And I think you need to seek God. I think you need to get wise counsel. But do you really truly believe that God is who he says he is, that it's done, it's finished? Because I've been praying for for 11 years for one prayer. One prayer, 11 years, Allison, he's not answered it yet. But here's what he said. It don't mean I'm dead. It don't mean I'm I'm not. It's about God's time, and it's about the way he delivers. It's about how he works. You see, See, some of you are praying to get married, but you're not ready to get married. Some of you are praying for the Holy Ghost, and you're going to abuse the Holy Ghost. <laughs> All right, so you got to trust that God is who he says he is. Number two, believe he is able to do what he says he will do. Believe he was, he's able to do what he says he will do. I trust you, Lord. I know you'll do what you said you're going to do, but why come you haven't? Okay, let me give you this last one then. Here's a big one for me, because I'm wired different. 
You're not scared. You ain't scared. Live in peace knowing his love is greater than any circumstance you are facing. I can live in peace. You know when you really truly got peace? Here it is. You ready? I'm not going to give you a definition, so I'm going to give you a hard answer. How can you have peace in a world that's falling apart? You believe that God can do it in your life, and you trust him that he is going to do it. And listen, this is where the rubber meets the road. This is where the rubber meets the road. So here's what I'm asking. Here's what I'm asking all of us to do today is the praise team. I don't know where they're at. I guess I need to go another 45 minutes. I don't know, but anyway, so... Uh, some of y'all like a horse in a chute. Do it. Do it. <laughs> Here's what I'm asking. Here's what I'm asking. I'm, I'm wrapping up. I'm landing in the big 747. Here's what I'm asking. And this is some serious, serious, serious stuff. It's so easy to sit out there and it's so easy to even preach a sermon. God, I trust you. I believe in you, Lord. But I don't have no peace. If you don't have peace, listen to me. Listen to me. It's because of your trust factor and your believing factor. Bottom line. And I can prove it biblically. So here's what I'm asking me. And I'm asking all of us to pray today. Y'all ready? And I want this to go on the big screen. I surrender my will to God today. Whew. Brian? I'm scared. Tell God. Listen to me. He's got big shoulders. And he loves to hear from his children. See, some of you haven't surrendered because you're scared of what he may ask. Yeah. You're trying to tell God what you're going to do. And he's sitting there going, man, until you surrender, <laughs> I can't go forward in your life. So here it is. I surrender. My will to God today. Now, I'm going to tell you, y'all want revival? You want your marriage to be hot, smoking, and rocking? Yeah, 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 you guys want to want to want to see God do some amazing things in this church? And listen, I know He's done some amazing things. But watch this. What would happen if we surrender to His will? Could it be? I'm just asking. Could it be the reason why we've not seen an outpouring because we've not surrendered? Could it be in your marriage the reason why you're struggling because somebody, somebody hasn't surrendered? So there it is. That's, that, that's where I wanted to get today. I surrender my will to God today. If y'all can say that, if you can say that, God will advance you what if your answer to your prayer is based upon your surrender? What if the answer to your marriage is based upon your surrender? What if Elkhorn Baptist, God's outpouring of the Holy Ghost, is based upon our surrender? So I'm here today to tell you, and I'm going to do it publicly, and I'm going to do it open. And I don't know what this means. I don't know what God's going to do in my life. But watch this. God, today, I surrender my will. I surrender my mind. I surrender everything to you, God. Take me and use me for your glory. And God, if it's to go to Nineveh, watch this. I'm not like some of you. See, the difference between me and Jonah, I would have told God, God, I don't want to go to no Nineveh. They're cutting their heads off. They're mean over there. They're killing people. And God would have said, who, who knows what God would have done? I'm telling y'all today, there is something special in this house. I'm telling Elkhorn Baptist Church and anyone who is watching by Facebook Live or on the website today, the answer to your prayers is based in your surrender. So, and oh, by the way, when Jonah went to Nineveh, after he finally surrendered, 120,000 people got saved and got born again and knew Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. Made that happen in South Central Kentucky. Made that happen over in Calvary and Marion County. Made that happen in my home. Made that happen in Elkhorn Baptist Church. 
Guys, we're good. God loves us. Elkhorn has favor upon her. But I'm telling you today as your pastor, and Aaron, I want you to put that back up there because that's it. What if I told you the answer to your prayer? And notice the first letter. I. I. The same little letter that's in sin. I. You can turn it around. I know I used to be a sinner. But now I'm a saint. I know my mind's not always been alert. But today it's in good. I surrender. Y'all remember that song, I surrender all? I'm not going to sing it. We sing that so loosely. I surrender all. All to Jesus. I surrender. And you might as well be looking at yourself in a mirror. Because I'm telling you, you know what this world needs? Listen to me very, very carefully. I know that every cop isn't good. I know that every government official is, is not good. I know that every church member is not good. Listen, God said if you will surrender, trust and believe, I'll give you peace. Y'all got it? Trust and believe and He'll give you peace. So Father God, have your way today. I surrender all. God, I'm opening up this altar. And Lord, I know we got a six feet social distancing. But God, you're bigger than that. And I just pray, God, that right now in Jesus Christ's name, that the blood of God would be over this house. From the front to the back, side to side, and top to bottom, God, that today there would be a holy surrender upon this place. It's not my church. It's not my church. This is God's house. This house belongs to the Lord. And may the surrender of God touch us like never before. So Elkhorn is your pastor today. I surrender. I surrender. I surrender. You ready? How about you? How about you? Are you going to sit there and judge your neighbor? Are you going to sit there and say, well, if they change, I'll change? That's not surrender. That's not surrender. Surrender is saying, God, I know what's going on. This is so good. I know what's going on. But God, today, <laughs> I surrender. I give up. I tap out. So I'm asking you, Elkhorn. Y'all want to have church, right? Y'all really want to have church, right? This altar today is the altar of surrender. Get over yourself. Get over yourself. Get over yourself and surrender. So Father God, have your way. I'm believing God something so supernatural is going to take place in this house. God, start with me. In Jesus' name. And all God's people said.